Hello and welcome to Online Church at Baker Memorial United Methodist Church in St. Charles. We are so glad that you are here. I'm Pastor Kim Neese and I just want to extend an extra warm welcome. Let us know that you're here by going to bakermemorialchurch.org and filling out the online attendance. We want to give a shout out to Paul Contarado as our liturgist today and Aaron Friend, who is our musician, as well as those behind the scenes, Mandy Hale, Rob Hale, and Michelle Claney. We have Pastor Mary, who will be preaching today, who will be continuing our sermon series called The Best Love in 1 Corinthians 13. We have many announcements that we would like to make you aware of. July 4th is our first day that masks will be discretionary. So that means inside the church, if you're vaccinated, you don't necessarily need to wear a mask, but you may wear a mask if you'd like to. I will continue wearing a mask even though I'm vaccinated just for personal reasons. If you are not vaccinated, we do recommend that you do have a mask on. Mask will also be worn in the nursery on Sundays. Well, we would love to invite you to be part of the family. That means going through a membership class with Pastor Mary, and it's going to be a great opportunity to learn and to grow what Baker Memorial United Methodist Church is all about, as well as for us to get to know you. In addition to that, we have preparation for baptism classes. We have a couple people already signed up who will be having their children baptized. You may be have thinking along the lines for either your children or for yourself if you've not been baptized before. You can sign up for that at tinyurl.com, Baker Baptism 21 class. Well, July 15th, we are going to be hosting vaccines for the COVID shot. We are partnering with IDPH, and you can sign up to get your shot or tell others about it at tinyurl.com, got my shot. We hope that you will spread the news to others in our community. That's from 11 to 3. In addition, if you want to be part of making a contribution to the local community, you can join the Northern Illinois Food Bank on July 19th from 9 to noon. It's a way for you to partner with the food pantry and getting things set. We have several people who go each month. We do it the third Monday of the month. Well, we have a, a new bishop who every single year we have a bishop's appeal. And this year, Bishop Hopkins has an appeal for UMCOR's COVID-19 relief fund. You may want to do that by looking at the text to word give number right there. Um, or you may want to go to UMC NIC, which is United Methodist Church Northern Illinois Conference. That's what those letters stand for. Backslash Bishop's Appeal 21. So we are just thrilled to have you here. And at this time, if you have a candle in your home, we'd like for you to get that out so that we can light a candle together as we continue our worship. Let's pray. Oh, good gracious and glorious God, we just thank you for today, Independence Day, July 4th. We just lift up the independence of our country. We lift up those who went to fight for our country. And we just ask that you open our minds for the best kind of love that we know, that new way to live a life of love. And so as Pastor Mary preaches, we just lift her up and just lift our own hearts and minds up to you as we listen and as we grow, as we sing, and that we can just be together through this online community. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and everyone said, Amen. We continue now with our song, if you'd like to sing together, I Need Thee Every Hour, and how that is so true, that we need God every hour and every minute of every day. Let's continue singing now.
from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Over the last month, we've been working our way through 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We've been going pretty slowly, taking the time to think deeply about what God was inspiring Paul to teach the Christians in Corinth almost 2,000 years ago. And we're almost done. Paul Conorado read some of the last verses in the chapter today. And next week, we're going to finish up by stepping back to relook at the message of the entire passage. Now, Paul used two metaphors in the verses that we read today. First, he talked about childhood ways in contrast to adulthood ways, and about how accurately, and then about how accurately one is able to see oneself in a mirror. Both of these metaphors seem to be aimed at a teaching essentially the very same thing. Paul was trying to help the people at the church in Corinth see that they were actually in a different spot on their journey of spiritual maturity than they thought they were. Some of them seemed to have thought that they had arrived at the end of the journey. Paul corrected them in an easy to understand and memorable way. The first metaphor he used was about children. When I was a child, he wrote, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. First thing I think we ought to think about is that Paul wasn't actually trying to say anything negative about childhood here. He's simply observing that childhood and adulthood are different. He observes that children speak differently from adults. They don't think like adults and they aren't able to reason like adults. These are simply facts. We are not born as adults. Human beings need a period of time and also nurture by others over a period of time in order to grow up in body, mind, and soul. 
So there's absolutely no problem with being a child. The problem that Paul is somewhat subtly pointing out is when a childlike person believes they are an adult and then takes on the roles of fully grown adults as if they were. That was the problem with some of the people at the church in Corinth. They thought they understood everything they needed to understand about God. They thought they had all the spiritual and community skills they needed to run the entire church themselves, but they did not. They were adult-aged people who were still spiritual children in important ways. Imagine for a minute what a household run by someone who had the communication, thinking, and caring capability of a typical eight-year-old would be like. There are a few children who could probably do this okay, but it would be rare to find many children like that. Imagine for a moment a school or a community led by a team of people with thought process, leadership skills, wisdom, and caring capacity of children. The likelihood of it turning out well is low. Childhood is good, but children or childish adults taking over what mature adults need to do generally doesn't come out well. The childish understanding of faith of some of these self-proclaimed leaders in Corinth was becoming visible in the way that they cared for others. Like young children often are, these people were self-centered. They were seeking self-satisfaction and they were unaware of the hurt that they were inflicting on the others. And I guess most of us know that this problem of childlike self-centeredness in adults is not only an ancient problem. It's a problem we run into in the modern world as well. I know I've had some teachers, even in seminary, who wanted to be right more than they wanted to help students learn. And I know I've had bosses who kept all the good comments about their teams, worked to themselves, but deflected all the critique back to their employees. Paul observes that a sign of adulthood is that their childish ways have been recognized and set aside in order to become mature, caring, loving adults. And his lesson is worth spending some time thinking about. Can you name the childish ways that you have discovered in yourself and then set aside? Do you know the difference between a child's understanding of God and a mature adult understanding of God? These are the signs to look for. They are the signs that you are no longer a spiritual child. Now, I know that some people find Paul's metaphor of childhood a little bit difficult to read because they think that Paul is being a little conceited when he offers himself as an example of adult maturity. And yes, Paul saying that he is an adult who has already put childish ways behind him might sound just a touch prideful. But I think we need to remember that it takes an adult perspective to actually be able to name childhood, childlike behavior. <laughs> I think back to when our children were young, and I'm sure I explained my parenting rules to our children by saying, because I'm the adult and you're the child, more than once in their childhood years. I'm 100% sure that when they were in their tween and teen years, I had to explain the difference between childlike behavior and adult behavior on multiple occasions. But I wasn't explaining these things out of pride. These words were spoken out of love. My aim was to help our children grow up to be adults in more than size and age. I believe that Paul was doing the same thing. He was helping the people he loved as Christian brothers and sisters grow up in their faithful leadership and care for others. Paul then continued on with the second metaphor that I think is closely related to this first one. Paul wrote, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. The first thing to notice is that Paul is no longer separating himself as different or more advanced from the others. He's standing with the people of Corinth, using the word we as he considers the human condition. He essentially repeats what he said a few verses ago, we know only in part. The metaphor he uses though this time is of a mirror. And a mirror is a tool that, especially in those days before they had invented telescopes or other instruments, was used primarily to see ourselves. So the knowledge Paul seems to be talking about here, or at least 
at least includes at some level self-knowledge. We cannot see ourselves clearly. We are unable to see our childlike ways easily. To better understand the mirror metaphor, we need to know something about the mirrors that Paul was referring to. Now, I've heard it said many times that ancient mirrors had a highly flawed reflection. And I know, having heard it, that it gave me the impression that people could barely see themselves in those ancient mirrors. But recent scholarship shows that this probably isn't a good understanding of this mirror metaphor at all. In fact, ancient mirrors were quite good in their reflection quality. Not as good as our coated glass mirrors, but every bit as good as a nicely polished metal surface would be today. So you certainly would think that you were seeing yourself reasonably well. And apparently, the city of Corinth had a pretty sizable mirror-making industry, so they presumably would look in a mirror and think they could see themselves quite well. However, Paul observes that this kind of reflection isn't a deep reflection. He says, we see dimly, perhaps because mirrors were made of brass, so that the image was in fact yellowed. And he says, now I see or know only in part, perhaps referring to the reflection in a mirror, not being of our whole selves. Even now we see ourselves in the front or in the back, but we can't see both generally simultaneously. So we might think we see well in a mirror, but even the best mirrors made in Corinth, we need to realize that we are still lacking in our ability to see ourselves including the childishness of our ways in comparison to God's desired ways. Paul goes on to say, Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. If you really think about God knowing you fully, and eventually then revealing everything about yourself to you so that you can clearly see really how well you've loved God, your neighbor, and yourself, you might find it a little bit overwhelming. What I love about this sentence is that Paul does not say this with any trace of fear. He seems calm and matter of fact, I will know in full about myself and my actions, even as I've already been fully known. Being able to welcome self-knowledge and correction by God is a true sign that Paul is actually quite mature. Paul gives us quite a lot to think about as he wraps up his teachings about love. He leaves us with metaphors that still have the power to teach us today as we remember in them in the midst of our days perhaps causing us to realize that we've acted in some childish way or causing us to understand that we have a lot to learn about ourselves and about God. Paul calls us to realize that there are others around us who are more mature, who can guide us and help us set aside these childlike ways. And he admits that all people need to be humble in God's presence because no matter how much we know or understand, only God knows us in full at least for now. My suggestion to you is that you carry these metaphors with you throughout this week. Hopefully, they will help you see yourselves more clearly in the spirit of Paul. Amen.
After that beautiful music by Aaron Friend, let us join together in a time of prayer. Our prayer today is focused on the celebration of Independence Day this weekend. Will you please pray with me? Gracious God, we come to you in gratitude today as we celebrate our nation's independence. We are especially grateful for the ways that you worked in and through the early organizers of this nation, inspiring to write and ratify words that guaranteed freedom to all people. We ask you to guide the leaders and people of this nation ever forward toward living fully into the vision that all men indeed are created equal and thus are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights and that among these rights are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We celebrate today, but we also come before you in humbleness. The events of the past two years have revealed that there is much work to be done before this ethic of equality is fully realized and these unalienable rights are equally distributed. Help us work together so that people can feel safe in their own neighborhoods and feel protected by those who have been hired to provide protection. Grant us the will and help us to see the way to create opportunities for the fullness of life for those who are oppressed, neglected, or excluded. Call us to do justice where freedom has been restricted unjustly and help us to see where life is simply unsustainable due to the impossibility of income ever providing fully for the cost of living. We look toward you who inspired our founders so long ago and ask you to inspire us still today. Help us to see your vision fulfilled in our lifetimes. We pray these things in the name and the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we join in the prayer that he taught his followers to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope that you have a wonderful holiday celebration this weekend. Um, I hope also that uh, you'll be able to enjoy this last set of music from Erin Friend as she plays an absolutely beautiful piece uh, called Chacon in G Major. And now, go from this time of worship renewed. Take the words and images of Scripture with you into your daily life so that God, the Creator, Spirit, and Savior can teach you how to love God, your neighbor, and yourself through all that you do. Go now, in peace, amen.